I say to the team, look, you know, it's a lot of talking at the start. Can I just have a glass of water? So they've found the most masculine cup they probably could in the station. Let's have a chat now. No sooks, no lefties with Michael Kroger, with James Ashby and the wonderful Nicole Flint. I hope you have a slightly more masculine setup than I've got. But anyway, let's go for this. So, um, Nicole, let's start with you. What's your message out of what happened in Dunkley? I had a fair spray in five different directions. What's yours? Well, Paul, it was always going to be a very difficult by-election for the Coalition and for the Liberal Party. The, the reason for the by-election was utterly tragic. Uh, we had the death of Peter Murphy, who was a very well-loved and very hard-working local MP. And as we know, uh, as political folklore goes, voters also don't like to think that they got it wrong in the first term of a new government. So. You know, we've got a lot of opportunities that we can see for the Liberal Party, and I know we'll have a lot of really good policies released in coming months in the lead-up to the general election. But overall, I think the signs for us were very positive. I think we're on the right track, and there is a big opportunity for the Coalition and for the Liberal Party when you look at the size of the swing. In the lead-up to the next election, we have a great opportunity to win back a lot of seats. Yeah, Michael, I, I just was thinking about this a lot today, right, which is I understand what the uh, lefty media is trying to do, which is uh, to get Peter Dutton tomorrow to come out with his one big idea of which we then spend the next six months with Treasury and the Australia Institute and the ABC and everyone else sort of picking apart. But the opportunity that does exist mm. for Peter Dutton in this budget and reply speech is to say the following things they could do something about, the following things they are, are what we will do something about, the following things they have taken away the following things we will put back. It's a good stopgap measure. We'll see where that goes in the next little while. But, but action on cost of living is something that, uh, you know, if Labor thinks they've stitched it up with $14 a week, OK, they won a by-election. They won't mm. win a general on that because once the money actually flows and people realise too little too late, the gloss is off. Mm. Mm. And look, as I said, you know, I, I thought the swing would be between 3 and 4%, as I said on Thursday night, yes, and it's did. come in just above half that way. So even though some of our people got a bit excited and some of Labor's people got a bit depressed beforehand, I'd look to me between a 3 and a 4% swing and that's what's happened. I agree with everything you've said in your editorial, but I'd add one other thing. Sure. 11 months ago, there was another by-election here, Paul, in Victoria and Aston. There was a 6.4% swing to the Albanese government. 11 months later, 3.6% against him. There has been a 10% move in Victoria in 11 months. Yeah, so what that tells you is the electorate thought this Albanese is fantastic when we were at Aston, he was doing all of these things. Uh, and 11 months later, they're saying, hang on, this bloke lied to us. He told us getting, you know, cost of living being eased was, was an easy thing to do. Um, he's full of hot air on a lot of these issues. So the challenge to Dutton, as you say, it's time for the federal party and the state parties around the country that have been in opposition for two or three years They've got to start announcing some policies. You know, it's not enough to be just against Labor. You, you've got to give... You know, I said to one of our MPs the other week, I said, have you ever thought of having a visionary policy? Uh, have you ever thought of a visionary policy that will excite the electorate? The people are going to say, that's fantastic. And he said, oh, no, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there needs to be... Some we don't want what the party doesn't need at any level, Paul, is a recycling of past policies with a new wrapper on them. You know, let's have some vision amongst our MPs. And if they haven't got any vision, stand aside and bring to, into the parliament some people who do, some people of courage. Yeah, yeah it's you a know, little bit it's, like... It's you, no you point having around, politicians with no ideas. Yeah, a room of about 60 people and say, what's your one big idea? And slowly but surely go through the process of, of metering those out. Now, James, again, one factor that was absolutely clear in this by-election, no one nation, no United Australia Party. So most people, including myself, just look at the maths and go, well, OK, if the centre-right wasn't there, then guess where they went back to? And that's the, the mothership of Team Blue. Why didn't one nation run in this one? Well, it was strategic because, number one, uh, we wanted to see... This was always going to be a contest between Labor and Liberal. Yeah, yeah. Um, the reality was we, we, we needed to see exactly how the Liberal Party were tracking. Uh, number one, I'm sick to death of the Liberal Party saying we split the vote. We don't. Uh, if anything, we do help them when it comes to the majority of seats across the country. Um, but what came out of this, uh, to me, was the simple fact that the Liberal Party still had problems. No matter 
how you try and slice and dice the positive out of this. The, they, the Liberal Party needed a morale boost, and they got a slight one, which is going to encourage some people back to the party and s simply say that we might be able to do it come this next federal election, whether that, that be later this year or next year. But it is unfathomable to think that you know, you've got Advance Australia spending $300,000 on a campaign that was deliberately targeting those Conservative voters to come back to the Liberals. Um, then the Liberals had their spend on top of that. These are enormous amounts of money that have been spent that can't be replicated right across the country when you've got a general election. Um, so if they can't do it with Advance Australia's help, I don't think they're capable of doing it alone. So they've got some massive fundraising shortages at the moment. I know a lot of big donors are just saying, sorry, you don't stand for anything yet. Peter Dutton, what do you stand for? Come up with some policies that we can actually get behind. We'll give you some money to help run your campaign. So this is why Advance has had to step up. Without them, they would have been dead ducks. And to be honest with you, um, a quarter of people just didn't bother turning up, as you said at the start. And that matters a lot. Of people just couldn't be bothered coming. It and, does. And, it matters hugely. And that's, and that's honestly where I think the Green vote. Everyone go, oh, you know, it's their position on Israel. And look, I would love it, that to be the case. About they're just rat bags and let's not play. Well, if a quarter of people didn't turn up, there's a fairly significant uh, point that a big, a big chunk of that may well have ended up being the Greens voters that didn't turn up. But, Nicole, again, this is the joy, right? This is the friends' conversation. It's not about happy chat, all the rest of it, right? So let's talk about where the Libs are. I noticed front page of The Australian tomorrow, and just breaking on their website now, is that uh, uh, Peter Dutton's going to double down and make the nuclear... take the nuclear option, centre it as, uh, as their major uh, energy policy. I haven't been able to read all of it because I'm live on the telly right now. But um, is that the type of place that Peter Dutton needs to go? And we know exactly where exactly where Labor goes in response to that. And Michael knows I've already offered a solution. I'll get to that in a second. But going all in on nuclear, and that happens between now and May, what do you reckon? I think it's brilliant, Paul. We need uh, a clear points of difference between Liberal and the Labor Party at the next election. And that's one of them. It, it delivers uh, base load power. It delivers reliable power. And it also ticks the climate change box. And it doesn't destroy great tracts of Australian farming land and coastline and our oceans yeah. in the process. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. And also, I just want to take James to task. He often says that, you know, Peter Dutton doesn't stand for anything. What a load of rubbish, with greatest respect, James. Uh, he well, took tell such us, a strong Nicole. stand on the voice. We want to hear it. Was it was gutsy. And it was... The voice. Dutton it had was, nothing to do with the voice. A, it was a gutsy sake. stand. It was it the was right stand. Sixty percent of the nation backed him in, and we will continue to see strong leadership. And we're about to see it on nuclear as well. Let alone national security, defence, uh, kicking criminals out of the country. I mean, if Peter Dutton had been prime minister, those 150 or so. Uh, illegal immig immigrant criminals would never have been released, I would suggest, from detention. So he has a very strong track record. He is a values-driven member of parliament. He's a great leader, and I can't wait to see the rest of the policies that the Liberal Party releases. All right, so just let's talk about nuclear before we get... You're yourself, Nicole. All right, well, OK, we'll go... We'll well, get... I'll just say this. I'll just say this. I, right. one, one thing, Paul. You keep kidding yourself, Nicole, because you've got factionalisation within the Liberal Party. You've got the Simon Birmingham's within your party that keep kicking uh, Peter Dutton in the guts. So you actually don't stand for something when half of your party goes with Peter Dutton and the other half just turn their backs on him and do the opposite. Sorry, unite your party first, then you might get... James, I, James that's very... I'm sure it's very easy to say that as somebody who belongs to a minor party with very few members. We are a broad church, well, I walked and away from our your policies party. Remember, I usually end up the in the right place because we have the left and the right. All right. Uh, now, I want to ask you, uh, just again on this nuclear thing, where, Michael, um, let's, let's uh, again in invoke the, uh, the ghost of shows past. Thursday night, we're here. Uh, Linda Scott, on the behalf of Labor, uh, uh, was very clear. You know, as soon as you talk about nuclear, um, you know, where's it going to go? Scare campaign about where it's going to go. Can I repeat what I said last Thursday? And I think this has to be part of any suggestion of nuclear energy from day one, which is rather than saying, we'll tell you where it's going to go, let local government areas bid to host it, and the trade-off is you can have free power for 25 years. That's how to solve the scare problem, isn't it, Michael? That's, that's the kind of policy you need. Yeah. 
I mean, um, uh, by the way, Nicole's analysis was absolutely correct, and James, I, I don't agree with you one jot. What Dutton has done very well in the last, since the last election is define himself. You know, people have a sense of who Peter Dutton is. And, you know, but the next election, mate, could be eight months away. It could be in November or December. I mean, we're, we're close. We're close to the election. That's why I say there's an urgency about releasing some of these policies. Nuclear, of course, it's the w correct way to go. Is it a massive vote winner for a general election? I would think not. You know, Tim Wilson and Jason Falinski have written an article in the Fin Review tomorrow morning, which is absolutely correct. The focus, forget it, no, no, the focus of the party needs to be on economics. It needs to be on tax. The, that's the number one brand equity for the Liberal Party. Our brand equity is not in nuclear power. If it was, the Abbott, Turnbull, Morrison government had nine years to do something about it. So, you know, Dutton has, has handled that debate incredibly well. And what you say, uh, local councils bidding, absolutely. What a brilliant idea that would be. But the focus has got to be on cost of living and the focus has got to be on the economy. There wouldn't be a nuclear power plant opening, by the way, for more than a decade, Paul. So yeah. that's why it's not terribly relevant to people in mineral Australia well, for the next election. Well, and look, the reason I groan at the, the Felinski stuff, right, was, again, they're sort of to the left of the party and it's all about winning back the teals, right? Yeah. That said, yes, the idea of the economy at the front and centre. And, and again, James, this is, this is the issue, right, which is that I think everyone can define what the problem is, but you have to have some level of a solution to it. Now... Albanese and sure. Labor was able to take a BS solution to it, to the Dunkley by-election and say, look at these tax cuts that don't kick in for months, and, even, and then when they do, you're going to notice that it's too little too late. But that's the point. You've got to have an offering, don't you? Well, that is true. But the, the problem with the Labor Party is they're very creative here. Uh, watch this hand while this one here is sneaking yeah. into your back pocket. Uh, we've got some legislation before us in the next couple of months that the Liberal Party are completely oblivious to. It's called the Nature Positive Bill. And that's something I really think the Liberal Party should focus their attention on, the National Party as well. This is secretly being devised by the Labor Party behind the scenes. The, uh, submissions close at the end of this month, and you watch it just get rammed through the parliament. This is going to impact on any future new mining development. This will also impact on housing development, which adds to the cost of living, uh, and agriculture. They're the three main primary focuses of that bill. And the other focus is, which is going to impact on most Australians, is they want to lock up 30 per cent of this country by 2030 and 30 per cent of our oceans. That means such restrictions to so many people, and it will add to the cost of living. Dutton needs to get his head around it. So the Liberals will come out fighting against it. I want other Conservatives to do the same. So, Nicole, please, when you're speaking to Peter next, can you just remind him, unite the party, tell Simon Birmingham to get out of there, and, and bring your party back to the Conservative side? <laughs> I think it's pretty united, actually, James, just to give you a let you into a bit of a secret, mate. I've been in the Liberal Party a long time. I don't think I've seen the Feds more united uh, for a long, long time. Back to the Howard era. Come to Canberra. I'll give you a new lesson. Come to Canberra. <laughs> I'll show you the real side. All Seriously. Right. Now, Nicole, now, Nicole, I, well, wanna, I, 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 won't be, I don't need advice from you, buddy, to be honest. <laughs> I don't need advice from you. Good man, though, is, good man though you are. This I, is I can work spicy these, little Sunday. Out for myself. I like this. This is a spicy Sunday. We thought no sooks, no lefties was just going to, you know, right, no, yeah. everyone's got their elbows out, and I love it, <laughs> the way it should be on a Sunday night. Now, um, one last thing uh, about Dunkley, but again, this pops up every now and then, and a few people were complaining, oh, the Labor Party was a bit too rough on, on the polls, and they were intimidating people. Now, look, <laughs> no one's going to think that that's OK. But we live in 2024. Uh, Film it! Stop talking about that. Film the bloody thing. Set up a camera at, at the polling station and film this stuff. Because I've got to say, Nicole, while... I trust that there probably was a little bit of, you know, mate, 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 you know, the usual stuff. And obviously your front and centre is somebody who copped an awful lot of it. But for goodness sake, someone pick up the phone and film it. Uh, yes, but probably easier said than done, Paul, when you're on a polling booth and you're there to try and hand out your how-to-vote cards, not uh, film what the opposition's doing. You put a gun I am the tree. Just really disappointed to see... I'm very disappointed to see more Labor thuggery because this is what they do. Happened to Van Boothby in 2019. Labor, the unions, you know, enough is enough. Let's just, let's just have a fight over policy, for goodness sake, rather than trying to intimidate people. And uh, it, 
I'm going to say it never comes from our side. If it does, it is very, very rare. It is always Labor, the unions, and get up. And quite frankly, I think we're all sick of it. Yeah, I'm with you completely. But as I said, maybe if it's the AEC that puts a camera uh, out the front of these things to, as to try to, again, control some of the behaviour. But I've got to say, you know, I know that there's certain parts of the country where there's very strict rules on how to vote, whether we move to a system where literally, and you watch everyone here tell me no, right? Because I understand why, right? You all know how elections actually work. But imagine if it was like, you know what, you can't... You, you know, uh, the people standing there, they just stand there, and if I want one, I go up to them and get it, instead of someone chasing me as we walk along. Some sort of buffer zone, right? Because literally, running the gauntlet feels awful for normal people. I know it's fun for sort of the hyper-partisans to, to walk up to the Greens and, you know, go stick it up, yeah, or, you know, uh, uh, blow raspberries at the parties that you don't like, the, the Victorian socialists, all that stuff. But for the vast majority of normal people, the jostle is quite unpleasant. Someone please fix it, do something about it. Anyway, quick break, back with more. Bold predictions for the week ahead and unity amongst that panel. Can it be achieved? More in a sec here on Paul Murray Life.